welcome back. You're probably wondering what is going on right now and boy are you in for a ride today. Look at this sexy styled wig. I feel like I'm a grandma, but at the same time I'm kind of not hating it. I mean this is the shittest wig known to mankind. I think it was like five bucks at my local cheap store. Do they even have a proper name? I don't know, but I mean like it's got like a random little bit of hair just here. What is it doing? Just pretend it's not there. And I mean you can see the wig cap. <laughs> Regardless, I'm just gonna paint over it. So I recently watched the Disney Pixar movie at Coco, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen it already. And I thought I'd do a body paint since I haven't done one for a little while now. I thought I'd turn myself into the lovely Im Imama? No. Mama Imelda. Probably butchering the pronunciation of it, but Mama Imelda, I believe, is how it's pronounced. I'm just gonna crack on straight into it. I would, of course, usually be blocking out my brows, but I have no idea where I've put my glue stick to do so. And I know, like, I know for a fact it's probably an eyesight but I cannot find it for the life of me. So we're just gonna have to pretend my brows are not here today and just paint over them and hope for the best. So for these paints today, I will be using a mixture of my, my wolf paints and my Montmartre paints. My shadows and brushes, I'll let you know along the way. So let's get started. I mean, I feel like it's not perfect, but it'll do. And the fun thing about body painting is you can black out this little naughty double chin. So continuing down the neck, I'm just drawing in all spots that I need to then paint later. So the neck, the necklace, the bones, the ribs, all of the above, just very roughly guys. And then going in with the black face paint and blacking out my double chin and the rest of my body that I do not need to paint white later, including the eyes, and in between the rib cages. I'm then just going in with some translucent powder and applying that all over my eyelid just to stop it creasing as I do find if I do not set it it will crack and with lights blasting onto your face your eyelids can get sweaty. I know that sounds disgusting but they can so setting it with that will stop any cracking or movement in the eyes. So then with a finer paintbrush I'm just going in and filling in any small bits that will be in between the ribs or any edges that I just need to neaten up a little bit. Now I decided to paint on the dress. I'm going in with the wolf purple plum colored paint here but when it dried it did become too dark so I do end up mixing it with a lighter purple and a little bit of white later just to try and get that nice frilled look and a lighter color going with the dress. And I do apologize because I do jump from spot to spot. I'm not very good at sticking with one task and continuing on. So now I've just gone to the nose. She does have like a little upside down love heart shaped nose. So I decided to blend that into my actual nostrils so I did not need to try and hide them. Now onto painting everything else white. I did apply very little water to the paint. You do want a nice thick opaque white you do not want it translucent as you will have to build up the color and then it can look streaky and patchy and there's just problems with that so you just want to go ahead and make it a really nice thick single coat layer if you possibly can and then just going in with a fine detail brush and clean up all the edges now for her ruby necklace i'm guessing that's what it is anyway i just mixed the purple the red and white till i was happy with the color i think i did end up darkening it a little bit just because i wasn't happy with it and then going around the ruby with a gold face paint, don't worry too much about the neatness. I do go in and crisp up the lines with some black paint later. And then also using a mixture of the white and black to get a nice deep charcoal gray, I then paint the beads around her neck. I'm not actually sure if that is the color of her necklace, but that's the one I decided to go with. Now I'm just going in and setting anywhere that I've painted white, as I am about to go in with some eyeshadows, and I find that if you at least put a translucent powder over the top of it, the eyeshadows don't stick in certain spots as much as they can. So it just allows you to blend a lot nicer and have a nice more transitioning color. So then just with a nice array of browns and light kind of ivory colors, cause bone is not usually pristinely white. I'm just going in and making it more of an ivory color just to make it a little bit more realistic. Even though I am painted as a skeleton, I do understand the irony of that. And then going in with just a small detail brush, I am just going in and separating the vertebrae and going around the edges of the ribs just to really define it and make it a little bit more cartoony. 
And as the vertebrae and the ribs at the back are actually meant to look deeper, I am just going in with a darker shade and applying that all over the top to try and make them look sunken back. Now I'm just going in with a white face paint and adding a highlight to each of the little grey circles on the necklace as if they were shiny and spherical they would reflect some light. So I'm just going in and applying that with a little bit of highlight to the ruby itself and the necklace just to make it a little bit more realistic. Now with a purple lipstick she doesn't have very thick lips so I am completely underdrawing my lips by a long shot just to make them nice and thin and very petite. And then just going in and shading the face you will of course want the jaw to be a little bit sunken back as the cheekbones will of course be higher. Now I'm just going in and adding the little details she has on her face. She kind of has flower petals around the tops of her eyes. She has this nice kind of florally water splash design in yellow on her cheek, which I'm sorry it's out of focus. I didn't realise and you probably won't be able to see it after this anyway. But I do end up putting a little bit of gold over the top as it looks a little bit nicer that way. I then mix some gold and some black together to make more of a bronze and I'm just putting some little dots under the eyes up to the side. Now I like to jump to and from whatever I'm doing so now I've just gone back to the ribs to add a little bit of shading to the front ones just to make them look a little bit more rounded, a little bit more like bones, a little bit more realistic. And I do realise by now that I'm pretty sure I've said realistic in almost every sentence. I apologise. Now with a very little amount of paint on the brush I'm just going ahead and applying some highlights to where the bones would be rounded on the top just to make like, them look like they've got a little bit of shape. Now just adding some pink dots to the little flower petals and then highlighting the dress. So I just apply a very little amount of white on my brush and go from the outside tapering it in to make it blend together with the water paints. This is a plus to water paints as they do mix together once they have dried if you apply something wet on top. So with a little bit of paint on a wet brush you can of course have that nice ombre style look. Now on her dress she does have some panels down the side and the front of her dress that she has a nice floral kind of design on so I'm just outlining those. Now her dress is slightly ruffled. I am not very good at this so I'm just doing a cartoony style ruffle where obviously just lines where the fabric would crease and that's about it. I think I had a little bit of shading near the lines and that's about it for the ruffle technique. As I said, not very good. Now onto the little floral design, she just has these little gold circles and some light purple dots around it. I think maybe they're meant to be roses but these were just gold dots. And some nice little two purple dots at the top and underneath. So now with some black face paint just on a very fine detailed brush you just want to go around and outline the necklace just to add some sharpness to it and make it really pop. Now onto her eyelashes, she just has these really nice thin wispy eyelashes. To complete her hair, she does have this nice white streak going up the middle and one just off to the side a little bit. She also has a pattern on her dress. I'm guessing again it was flowers or some nice detail but I'm not very precise at doing that. So just with the light purple I'm just going on and making little squiggles all over the dress. I like to draw inspiration from old grandma curtains is the best way to figure out what to draw. So there we have it guys. I know it looks a bit weird having normal hands with a skeleton body. And don't forget to leave a comment down below if there's any other Coco characters you'd like to see me do or any characters in general that you'd like to see me do. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did doing it for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.